Welcome to part three of this Blender tutorial series where we're creating this cute robot character. If you haven't seen the previous parts, you can check out the tutorial playlist linked in the video description. So in parts one and in parts two, we modeled the head and the body. And in this part, we're gonna be modeling the arms. And so in this part, we will have the modeling finished. You can also purchase the tutorial project files to help support the channel. And that's on my Gumroad store and Patreon page linked in the video description. And then before we continue with this part, I wanted to let you know about my Decal Normal Maps asset pack. In this asset pack, you will get 50 sci-fi decal normal map textures. Use these decals to add sci-fi details to your models. This product includes 50 different decal maps including PNG and JPEG versions. Use the JPEG versions for a smaller file size or the PNG versions for the maximum quality. Check out the full product video to learn how to add the decals onto your models. And if you're interested in purchasing the product, you can find all the product links in the description. So I'm gonna model the shoulders. So I will center the 3D cursor with Shift C and I'll go to the add menu and we're going to add a cube for the shoulders. I'll go into edit mode and we'll bring the cube over and we'll scale it down. Let's go to front view and we can just like scale it down and stick it here in the reference. So just compare it with the reference. Let's box select the bottom, bring it down and bring it over. And then we'll box select these vertices and bring it out. We can box select these vertices, bring it in. And let's scale it along the X axis by zero to flatten it and bring it over a little bit. We'll now add a loop cut right in the center. So left click and right click to leave it in the center. And then if I box select these vertices, we'll bring it down. And if I select these vertices, let's bring it up. So something like that. So it kind of rounds over a little bit. Let's also go to add modifier and we're going to add a mirror modifier to mirror it over to the other side. And then let's go to a side view here and we're gonna scale it up a little bit like that. Then we're going to add a loop cut. So control R, we're gonna add two loop cuts left click and right click so the loops stay in the center. And we're going to deselect everything and we're gonna box like this side and box like this side. And we're gonna bring these down on the Z axis, just about right there. Let's go to solid view. All right, that's pretty good. Let's now hit control two to add a subdivision surface with two levels and we'll just shade it smooth. Now, if we go back in edit mode, you can see these parts here, they come forward too much. So I'm gonna select this loop and then shift select that loop or don't select the loops, but just select the individual vertices and we'll go to front view. We'll go to wireframe and we're just gonna drag it back like that. So we're now gonna add another loop cut and we're gonna drag this loop cut really close just like that. And then we're gonna add one more loop cut and drag it really close as well to this edge. So if I go back to solid view, because we add those loops there, you can see that edge there is a lot more sharp. Then if we go into edit mode and go inside here, so go inside the robot, we don't want this to kind of round over. So we can just select these three faces and we'll just delete the faces. So now that looks a lot more sharp. So we have kind of those little shoulder pieces. Let's center the 3D cursor and I'm going to add a new object. So let's add a UV sphere and I'll go to front view and we'll go into edit mode and I'll scale it down and bring it over. Let's scale it down and then rotate it by 90 degrees. Scale it down again. And then in object mode, we'll bring it down. Let's go into wireframe and in edit mode, I'll bring it over and scale it down again and bring it back up in object mode. All right, just bring it over like that. And that's going to be basically like the shoulder joint. So it's kind of gonna be like a ball and socket joint. And we're gonna go back to object mode and we'll duplicate the entire object. And then back in edit mode, we're gonna move it over. So this is a now a new object cause I duplicated it. So we're gonna bring it over and then scale it down just like that. All right, so we have two ball and socket joints. And then if we select both of them, we're going to shade them smooth and we're going to add a mirror modifier. So let's add a mirror modifier on this one here. And then let's click on the drop down arrow because I have both of them selected. We'll click on the drop down arrow and copy to selected. So now we have both of those ball and socket joints. Also, I'm not gonna be renaming these quite yet because later we're gonna be like joining them together when we do like the rigging and stuff, but I am going to rename the shoulders. So I'll select the shoulders and we'll rename this to shoulders. So now what I'm gonna do is select one of these ball and socket joints and I'll hit shift S and I'll go to cursor to select it and let go. So the 3D cursor now is in the very center of where the center of those joints are. And that's because I moved the spheres in object mode. So the origin is still in the center. Now, if I go to the add menu, I can add a cylinder and we'll make sure on the add cylinder settings, the vertices is 32 and we'll go into edit mode and we'll scale it down and bring it over. 
bring it over to the side, and we'll go to front view and we'll rotate it by 90 degrees. We'll scale it down again. Let's go to wireframe and move it over, scale it up a bit like that. And then we'll go to the vertex select. We're gonna box select these vertices and bring it over and then scale it down. So this is like the top of the arms, like the upper arms. We're gonna go back to object mode. We're gonna duplicate the entire thing and then hit escape. We'll go into edit mode. So now this is a new object and we're gonna bring it over on the X axis and scale it down and bring it over just like that and maybe make it slightly longer along the x-axis all right so that's going to be the lower arms now right here there is a little like inset so we'll go back to object mode we'll select the upper arms and go into edit mode and we're going to add a loop cut We'll drag the loop cut right there. We'll hit Control B for a bevel, click there to place it, and then we will extrude it, escape, and then Alt S to scale along the normals, and just bring it right in there. So we have a little inset there. So that's just gonna add a little bit more details. And then we'll select this object, so the lower arm, we'll go to front view, we'll go to wireframe, and in edit mode, you can see there is actually gonna be a wrist piece. So I'm gonna box select this here, the end, and we'll bring it back and scale it up just a little bit. So I'm now going to duplicate this piece. So duplicate our selection, move it over just slightly and place it there. And then I'm going to extrude it out along the normals. So when you extrude out, it'll extrude along the direction of the face. And then we'll scale it down just slightly. Now, if we use the L key to select the linked vertices, we're going to separate it and we're gonna separate it by selection. So now you can see we have the lower arm and then this here is gonna be the wrist. Then let's go to the add menu again and we're going to add a circle. In edit mode, we're gonna bring the circle over and we're going to make like kind of the palm. So we'll scale it down. Let's go to side view and we'll rotate it by 90 degrees. Let's also go into wireframe and just make sure that everything is aligning up. You can see everything looks pretty good. It's aligning up with the reference. So we'll go to front view. We'll scale everything down and bring it over and scale it down again. So it's kind of coming off of the wrist. It's sort of like a palm, but it's not exactly a palm because the robot just has a claw hand. Let's now go to side view and I'm going to bring it over. So let's bring it over to this side. And then we want to add a mirror modifier. So we're add a mirror to this object and I want a mirror on the x-axis so it's on the other side of the robot but I also want a mirror on the y-axis so it's over on this side so now I can extrude it and we'll extrude it into the mirror on the y-axis and then I want to turn on the clipping button and then we can drag it back so you can see if I go back to solid view, I've extruded it back there. And then there isn't any face in here, so that's good, but I do need to hold down the Alt key and select that loop there, so the outer loop, and we'll fill a face. Let's now go to front view, then we'll go to wireframe, and we're going to inset this face, inset it like that. We'll go back to solid view, and I can extrude this back just like that to give it a bit of detail. And then if we select everything, let's recalculate the normals. All right, so we've modeled most of those base objects. So now I also wanna model the claw piece pieces, so the claw hands. So let's go to the add menu again. We're going to add a cube. We'll go into edit mode. I'll bring the cube over and scale it way down so make it much smaller. Let's go to front view. We'll go into wireframe and I'll bring it up and then we'll scale it down on the z-axis and stick it there. Now I want to mirror it over up and down so we're going to search for the mirror modifier and we also want to mirror on the x-axis so it's over on the other side of the robot but we also want to mirror on the z-axis so it's up and down. So now box select the vertices, bring it over, box select these vertices, bring this over, box select these vertices, bring that over, and then box select these vertices and drag that over. And then if we select this entire side, we're gonna extrude it and rotate it and move it down right in there. Maybe scale it down just slightly. Actually, I don't wanna scale it down because it will get thinner. So if I just box select this side, I'll bring it in and bring that in. All right, and then if we box like this side, we'll extrude it out, let's rotate it, and we'll bring it down like that. We can also scale it on the z-axis by zero just to flatten it, all right? And then if I box like this side, let's bring it out a little bit. All right, that's pretty good. So now if I zoom over here to the top, I wanna scale the entire claw arm in a little bit so it's not quite as thick. So scale it along the y-axis just like that so it's not very thick. Later on when we do the rigging, we are gonna separate these, but for now, we'll just leave that with the mirror. Now, what I wanna do is cut out kind of a little like trench piece here so that this uh, claw can kind of rotate open and closed. So we're going to select this piece and let's hit forward slash to go into local view of the wrists or the palms. We'll go into edit mode and we'll select everything and I'll just zoom into our selection. So I wanna add a loop cut. So we'll just add a loop cut like right there. And real quick, let's hit forward slash to go out of local view. And I just wanna drag the loop, so double tap G and edge slide the loop just right there so that the wrist or the claw piece is just barely fit inside it. And then I'll go back into local view and then we will zoom into our selection. So I'm going to go to top view and I'm gonna to go to the face select. I'll go into wireframe. 
and I'm just going to box select all of these faces right back there. So if I go back to solid view, you can see right up here, we have this ring all the way around. It's selected all the way around, but then this back part here isn't selected. So now we're going to extrude it, escape, and then we'll scale it along the normals. And so we're gonna scale it way down just like that. So we can have this little like trench piece. So if I go out of local view, you can see now, let's hit all S again, scale it down a little bit more. You can see it's gonna kind of go down there. And of course this isn't like technically accurate. Like there would need to be, you know, more pieces inside here for it to actually work. But this is like a cartoony robot. So I'm not gonna model all the details, but just like that's pretty good. So basically once the rigging is set up, this piece is kind of gonna rotate like this. So it's gonna kind of rotate. And so that's why I want kind of that little trench piece. All right, so let's zoom out here and we'll save the project. So now we need to add some modifiers because we need to mirror it over and then also add the bevel modifier. So let's select this piece here. We're going to search for the mirror modifier and then we'll select this piece here. We're also gonna add the mirror and then let's select the wrist piece and we're also going to add the mirror modifier just to make sure everything is mirrored over to the other side. So now I'm gonna zoom into just this side and I want to select this piece and then shift select the hinge and I'll hit control J to join it together into one object. We'll do the same thing here. So we're gonna select this piece, so the upper arm and then select this ball and socket joint and then control J to join it together. So this is one object and then this is one object. Then we have the wrists and then we also have the palms and then we also have the claw arms. And then of course we have the shoulders. So now there isn't quite as many objects objects. So I now want to add the bevel and weight to normal modifiers to all these objects. So we're going to select the upper and lower arm, and we're going to select the wrist and the palm and the claw. And then we'll lastly shift select the head here, and we will go to the bevel, click on the drop down, and copy to selected, and then go to the weight to normal, and we will copy to selected, and then we'll shade all the objects smooth. And then if we select the claws and zoom into it, on these claws, I actually want the bevel to be a little bit bigger. So if I select the bevel, let's open it up and I'll just drag the amount up a little bit more, not too much, but just a little bit more. So they're a little bit more round, maybe even just a tiny little bit more. So maybe like a bevel value of 0 0.006. So it's a little bit more round. And then I do want to rename all the objects. So let's just minimize the modifiers and we're gonna open up the robot and let's click on each object. So we already renamed the shoulders. You can see right there, shoulders. So we'll select the arm, F2, and we can call this upper arm. And then we'll select this one. We'll rename this to lower arm. Then we'll select this one here, and this is gonna be wrist. This one, we can just rename this to palm. And then this one we can call claws. And then also I am gonna just do it in this part. What I'm gonna do is separate these claws. So if I select the claws, let's open up the mirror here and we are going to apply the mirror. So let's click on the drop down and just apply the mirror. We'll go into edit mode. And what I wanna do is separate all of the claws into their own pieces. So I can just pet, press P and we're going to separate by loose parts. So I'll go back to object mode and I can see each one of these claws are their own object. So if I just select each claw, I can just rename these. So like claw one and we'll do claw two, three and four. I'm just gonna rename these all in the outliner. Now what I also wanna do is apply the mirror modifier on the other objects so that then when we actually rig it, these pieces are separate so they will actually move separately. So what I'm gonna do is just select the palm, the wrist, the upper arms, and the lower arms. We don't need to worry about the shoulders, but all of these objects. And then let's go here to the mirror modifier. And since all of these have a mirror and we want to apply all of them, I'm going to hold down the Alt key and then click on this little drop down arrow and then click on apply. So you can see now if I select each one here, you can see because I held down the Alt key, it applied just the mirror modifier on all those objects. So in edit mode, you can see it's all geometry. So I'm gonna go into edit mode. And so now we're into edit mode with all the objects. So we're in like multi object edit mode. And I'm gonna go to wireframe and we're gonna deselect everything. And I'm just gonna box select this side and I'm going to press P and we're gonna separate by selection. Now we'll go back to object mode. So we separated it by the selection, but because these were still individual objects, we now have all of these objects which are individual. So you can see all of these are their own individual objects. So I'm just gonna go here and rename all of these. So this claw, I can call it like claw left one. And then this here is gonna be claw left two. And I'm gonna hide those objects because I've already renamed them. We'll select this here. This can be palm left, hide that. This can be wrist left, hide that. This one here can be lower arm left. This here can be upper arm left. 
All right, so that's good. And this here, these can be right. So upper arm right, this can be lower arm right, wrist right, palm right, and then claw right one. And the final one is claw right two. So let's just unhide everything, hit Alt H just to unhide everything. And there we go, everything's nicely renamed. Of course, you don't have to rename everything, but it is really nice, I think it's a great habit. So I will hit Control S to save this project. And so this is gonna wrap it up for part three of the tutorial series. So all of the modeling is finished. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you're enjoying the tutorial series. You can also help support the channel by purchasing the project files, so if you're interested in that, the links are in the video description and you can purchase on my Gumroad store and my Patreon page. So in the next part, we are going to set up some basic lighting and they'll be creating some procedural materials. So when the next part is released, it'll be right up there on the end screen and also the link will be in the video description. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next part.